Hello, and welcome to Historic Hole. I'm David, and as always, I'm joined by Jason and Michael. Howdy. What's up? And we here at Historic Hole, for those of you who have not listened, we try to take a slightly entertaining look, you know, we try, but usually not good, and history. We like to dig holes, if you will, in Historic Hole. And this week, we're going to ancient Egypt. I'm sure oh, you've heard yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pyramids. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Walking like an Egyptian. This oh, is eighth yeah. grade history. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, I, this is easy stuff. I feel like we mention eighth grade history almost every episode. Well, basically, that's what we're going to... We're going to keep going on that until we run out. <laughs> because we soon... <laughs> until we graduate. We, we, we go to ninth grade. <laughs> we go to high school. Ninth grade. Get more... Well, I guess we have already been kind of political. <laughs> Kind of. Kind of, sort of. Early poli- Jason. politics. Yeah, early politics. Early, politi- early U.S. And- politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But today I think we're going to be talking about Egyptian politics. Yeah, c- potentially. Somewhat. <laughs> somewhat, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's in there, obviously. It's through their history. You're going to touch on some of their politics. And it's a long history. But there's, yeah, it goes on for, jeez. Uh, Forever. <laughs> They're still here. 2,000 years? Yeah. Something yeah. like that? Good three, almost 3,000. 3, yeah. Um, well, so once they were included into the Roman Empire, they just became a province <laughs> of Rome, you know, for about 600 years or so. Uh, but if you don't include that, then, yeah, it's basically 3000 years. And that's a long time. It's a long time, a long time to be a civilization. And they're still around. Egyptians are still around. So isn't that cool? Pretty wild. <laughs> ain't that cool, guys? No, yeah, I mean, it is cool. Because think about all the peoples that have died out. That we covered. Bronze Age collapse and all that. Yeah. Egypt persevered. Yeah. Egypt and peace. Man. Civilization. Must be something in that in that blood. <laughs> Keep them going. It's that alien. It's because they view the world upside down. Oh, yeah. Yes. And so that's a good place to start because, yeah, basically the because the Nile flowed nor- uh, south to north. <laughs> um, they uh, Which is perce- unusual, in it, case you're wondering. For water, yes, to flow up. Yeah. So they... <laughs> Doesn't pers- really make sense. <laughs> and... Uh, naturally like we do i guess we perceive water flowing down and you know gravity north to south stuff. like yeah yeah like we assume that's what's going on there and um so they perceive the world basically upside down so upper egypt and lower egypt are actually opposite like uh the delta was considered lower egypt but the delta is northern egypt <laughs> um but for the sake of talking about this like the way they they viewed it um and the way it's described in a lot of you know historical texts and everything uh we're gonna go by that those uh uh what was semantics yes i uh, looking at a map of ancient egypt always confused me because they always had upper egypt as the uppermost part mm-hmm. of egypt yeah and it's upside down so yeah. and why did the nile why does it flow that way? I assume because of the landscape. Yeah, I assume it's elevated. It's just like, well, I'm going this way. I'm the Nile. Yeah, that's how water works. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's, gravity, it's going, it's going guess, the other yeah. way. It's like the only really big river so that be, goes yeah, that way, the, right? The, the elevations descends. must be uh, favor that flow. I suppose <laughs> it's so. It's interesting. It's a heavy yeah. flow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus. Oof. We don't need yeah, Egyptian that, Jesus for our female listeners. They get that. Sorry. They get that reference. Oh, yeah, let's, call, let's call attention and, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep pointing at it. So we're going <laughs> point out, at it and laugh. So we're going south to north. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I was just kind of wanted to go into that just to give people an idea of uh, the orientation and how we're going to talk about it here. So uh, those are actually considered two separate parts of Egypt for uh, a, ter- a term of their history, but in uh, which you this is what's con, we're kind of considered the beginning of Egypt, you know, as a whole is uh, in 3150 BC uh, under the king Narmer. Ooh. He's considered the first pharaoh. Narmer. <laughs> Narmer. Namor? I know, right? No. Like, <laughs> God of the sea or whatever the hell he yeah, was. It's like the superhero guy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Egypt um, was strange. I wouldn't be surprised if a superhero started it. Didn't Apocalypse do that in X-Men? I don't know. It's all... Th- <laughs> Let's not get yes. X-Men. <laughs> yeah, Jason over here will know. That will be next week's historical. <laughs> <laughs> the, st- the history of Apocalypse. The history of Ensabonner. <laughs> oh, boy. God. Uh, so, basically, from 3150 to uh, 2686 is considered the early dynastic period. And we're just going to gloss over that. B.C. <laughs> B.C. B.C. Because, yes... We've we have traversed the year three thousand already in AD. In the year three thousand. 
Um, so unless the listeners are just like, I don't know, on drugs. <laughs> Hopefully you are. Um, you know, they, they should they should way. understand where what we're talking about. Yes, in terms of time before right. Jesus time <laughs> time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the old kingdom uh, period is considered uh, six twenty or twenty six eighty six BC to twenty one eighty one BC, uh, and this is where the construction of the greatest pyramids uh, occurred. The this greatest is, where the aliens landed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the alien spacecraft landing platform, and so. they built them. We yeah, historical go down to uh, all these things. <laughs> willingly built them for the aliens. They oh, were yeah, friends. Yeah. They were good friends. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and so chums, f- pals. They're quite chummy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the solidification of pharaohs as god king. Um, oh yeah. Occurred during this period as well. Uh, so that's always interesting. Uh, it's the aliens came up with that concept, told us about God, and then we went, went wild with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I knew God. I'm a king. I'm a god king. <laughs> It's like, well, I'm a king, so I must Might be, well be a god uh, king. Must like, be something special about me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Memphis is the capital of the old kingdom. Yeehaw. <laughs> Memphis. <laughs> they make some great whiskey. Memphis, Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> they make some they great barbecue. Down to Memphis, Egypt. <laughs> great some barbecue. It's not very good. <laughs> it's, it's, like barbecue. A, it's like a goat or a camel. <laughs> but it's barbecue nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, no, Memphis, seriously. We also made the first, <laughs> but seriously. We also made the first beer. In Memphis, Egypt, <laughs> they and probably so, had beer. No, Egypt. Egypt's made beer. Oh, that's what, I thought you were saying Memphis, the other Memphis, in Egypt. The one we're not talking. About. <laughs> the one we're totally not talking about. <laughs> um, all right, so you know that was all well and good. Obviously, they're building pyramids. You know, pharaohs are looking cool, partying with their uh, entourage. Everything's great with the gods. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's having a good time. But then we get a power split. Oh, and the God. first intermediate period begins in 2181 BC to uh, 2040 BC, which, uh, so that's what, like 140 years power split. And so there's two dynasties here, opposing dynasties, and the Theban dynasty comes out uh, as the victor. So now in the Middle Kingdom period, which is 21, or 2040 BC to uh, 1782 BC, uh, this, uh, the Thebans are in control. And but and the thing is is like this in this period politics start getting ramping up and the the, the nobility and the the second in command of the pharaoh gain a lot of power. Yeah, it's like am I just regular king? And so <laughs> the power of the pharaoh kind of erodes here during this period. Um, and another thing that's always confused me is there's also a Thebes in Greece. Yeah. yeah. So whenever I was reading his history, I was like they talk about Thebes. His big old history in a, vague, book. in a vague context. I'm like, where? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which Memphis? <laughs> like Oedipus, I thought was in Egypt for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because King and then, Leonidas, and like we talked about in an episode about Alexander, he went and sacked Thebes. Yeah. And screw Thebes. Back in the good old days. <laughs> so it's like that's a, that, and that's Fuck a different Thebes. that's a different Thebes <laughs> than what we're talking about here. Yeah, what if they went confused. to the wrong Thebes to sack it? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Took a wrong turn. Some light like six months. <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah, kind of went halfway across. The, you you know, look God. at the map. It's upside world. down because they're in Egypt. They're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 they went to the wrong Thebes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, turn it around. Who had the map? <laughs> Who has had the map? Cut his head off. <laughs> <Tony> Robin. <laughs> New map guy. <laughs> God map guy. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> All right. So, um, and this is an interesting period. I always say that. Um, <laughs> everything's interesting in history. Uh, Egypt takes a Nubian kingdom from Kerma. Um, Kerma de Frog. Uh, so this, uh, what, what's kind of interesting here is the, uh, the kingdom flourished during the intermediate period um, where, the, uh, you know, there's the dynasties uh, are battling each other. Uh, because obviously they're concerned with other stuff. Um, you know, the, uh, the Nubians, they just... Uh, Nubian. They just start mining and like gaining valuable resources and just like creating stockpiles of basically valuable uh, resources. So once <laughs> the, piles and the piles. Theban dynasty comes Ready to power, to the market. Well, yeah, once the Theban dynasty comes to power, they see all of the resource rich, you know, all you know uh, areas up there, which is like Upper Egypt in that area, north of piles that. of gold. Um, so. Uh, Eventually, lower uh, Nubia and Kerma were brought under the control of Egypt, 
um, and for a time. And the Nubians were actually inducted into the army. You know, Great that, fighters. Yeah, and see, that's the thing about the Egyptians. And I think that's one thing, reason why they've lasted so long. is like, yeah, they're just like, yeah, whoever wants to come fight, like, <laughs> they just come on. Uh, so, yeah, they, uh, we'll give you they, had an eye for, they had an eye for talent, let's say that. Because like <laughs> later on, the sea people come around, they, they induct some of them into their ranks as well. Sea so. people. Uh, anyway, uh, so, yeah. Uh, great, great fun time. Great period. <laughs> it was a great intermediate period. Uh, but so uh, Sen Sen Wasret the third uh, three, three, the three, <laughs> the three. <laughs> you know, it. Yeah, Ramsey's three <laughs> coming so, this summer. I <laughs> that's how I wrote it down. Uh, Sen Wasret the third. 1878 BC to 1841 BC campaigned in Canaan for rulers to become vassals of Egypt. And then in this process allowed for people to immigrate from Canaan into the Delta region of Egypt. And so this has some effects here um, because the second intermediate period begins 1782 BC to 1570 BC. And this is where Avaris is established by the Hyksos people. And then that's just a city state in the Delta region of Egypt. So like <laughs> from the Canaanites. Yeah. Or yeah, exactly. They, that immigrated there. They created yeah. their own little <laughs> town. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, that's why you have to assimilate to the culture. <laughs> it's otherwise you set up your own city. state. It's <laughs> just like, fuck it. We're doing our own thing. We don't like this culture. <laughs> just build some walls. And we're doing our own thing. We keep our own culture. <laughs> so according to the map guy, we need to go over there. Why can't we just go through? It's like, oh, we don't go through that city state. <laughs> in, in addition to Canaanite, they're also considered Amorite and Hurrians are also thought to be mixed in there too. And if anybody remembers the from the Hurrians, yeah, they were really from, fast. <laughs> Assyri- they were fought yeah, the Assyrians. Yeah, the Assyrians. So it's like they they um, the Assyrians fought them. Eventually, uh, they turned into Mitanni Kingdom, which we're going to cover here in a moment. Um, but so anyway, stay tuned. Uh, during this time, because, uh, and so the Hyksos, actually the Hyksos eventually, uh, peoples eventually spread out and just took over the Delta region of, of Egypt. And, uh, this is ours. Once the Hyksos moved in, things went down to hell. So that's considered the Hyksos, uh, a 15th dynasty from 1650 BC to 1540 BC. They had 14 before that. Yeah. They must've had 14 <laughs> dynasties before that. So, you know. Yeah, How do you it's become fun. a dynasty? It's fun. It Dynastic fun. rule yeah, is so man. fun. You know, we need a dynasty. Un- unlike we the need Golden to bring State back Warriors. dynasties. <laughs> Not sports dynasties. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, d- and during this period, because, you know, Egypt obviously is, you know, you have, a, it, it's all split up now. You got all these different people in there. Uh, the Nubians uh, took more territory and only a small region like of e- that was actually considered Egypt existed because every, you know obviously the Hyksos had the other territory the Nubians had uh, had Kerma you know basically expanded that so then there's a tiny little spot of land this was is it just Thebes or Memphis it wasn't Memphis that would have been in the Delta region so that would have been under the control of the so Hyksos it yeah it would have been Thebes yeah um, We're I second. stand alone. <laughs> So, but the, the, but the Thebes eventually overthrew the Hyksos and took back, you know, the Delta region. Get the fuck out. The Hyksos from Memphis. They're all Hyksos. <laughs> Hyksos. <laughs> but take, the, he'll take a Hyksos. Oh. oh, my God. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. New kingdom. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sorry, Recovering the new kingdom period is 1570 BC to 1070 BC. So Nubia and Canaan were both brought under Egyptian control during this period. Uh, Egyptians now we, we talked about the Mitanni Hurrian kingdoms come together form this Mitanni empire term to be used loosely because the Assyrians were the first ones boom, boom. Uh, Mitanni gave greater autonomy to local rulers so they people preferred living under the Mitanni versus the Egypt because the Egyptians they like, let us do whatever we want yeah they were very like very laissez faire <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when it comes to uh, hands free if you don't speak uh, French you know, when it comes to ruling so yeah they uh, <laughs> like alright guys you know basically you know pay us our tribute but you know otherwise whatever and tribute I present myself as tribute <laughs> yeah the hunger games which is basically what was happening in a lot of history but we'll get into that later <laughs> most of history was just <laughs> hungry people the hunger <laughs> and there was no games they probably had a stick that they threw around but <laughs> throw the stick around until you are not hungry or you die alright so 
uh, you know, they're butting heads with the Matani here. And like Canaan is actually, this is actually a period of like a, a de- or like actually a century basically where uh, Canaan is just swapping like back and forth between Egypt and the Matani. And it just, because like he's just trading Playing it up. sides. Yeah. They're just, you know, taking it back, you know, either through force or bribing, you know, so it's a dangerous game. Keeping two lovers <laughs> bouncing back and forth here. Um, where were you last night, my tiny? <laughs> hanging out at Egypt's house. <laughs> I mean, uh, crap. <laughs> so eventually, the Mitanni and Egyptians make peace. Where'd and, you get that camel? And the way they do this is they kind of have this arrangement where it's like Mitanni princesses are married to Egyptian pharaohs. And so that's kind of, you know, you get the, the Mitanni influence in the Egyptian empire. And also, too, within Egypt, it was seen as like when, when the pharaohs would marry um, the pleb. Or, I mean, they're not. They're just royalty. Oh, yeah, yeah, another yeah. empire. Just royalty. a different empire. Um, but when they see that, that's kind of considered, uh, I think that kind of, uh, they, they helped their image, basically, publicly. It was like, it's seen as like a cultural thing, a good thing. Like, Egyptians liked it. It played well to the crowd, the Egyptian crowd. So Look like, at this yeah, girl. Yeah. So Nefertiti, she's thought, speculated to be one of those Mitanni princesses. But anyway. Speculation. Uh, and, and two, like relations were so good between Egypt and the Mitanni Empire. At one point, apparently, a Mitanni ruler, like uh, the king emperor, I guess is what you would call king them. emperor, god king, uh, god pharaoh emperor, god pharaoh emperor. He uh, took a visit to Egypt and, like, actually, yeah, like you know, we, well, these two powers were allied in a way. They weren't necessarily, um, you know, like any alliances usually it's not based on like oh like well open arms you know it's like yeah. okay we're not going to yeah, murder like you in cold stuff. blood yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like oh yeah so there's uh, just kind of agreement made it's usually not too like they're not doing that kind of this is, for the period this was interesting this is like unheard of kind of he's just basically. traipsing around so hey guys what you doing didn't even have a honor guard he's just walking around Egypt. Uh, probably they probably no, did he probably, probably. <laughs> he's probably heavily guarded probably but, was like on an elephant a war elephant but the relations were good that you know like that that kind of thing's happening um anyway nobody assassinated him like ferdinand rest in peace eventually mitanni fall like we we know and the hittites and the assyrians consume them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the great hunger was quenched <laughs> <laughs> like the lions tackling a a wildebeest <laughs> sure. Is that, <laughs> is that always the thing? Usually it's a gazelle, right? I like him. Oh. Jason's just like changes well known sayings. <laughs> he does. I think we have a lot of that going on here. A broken watch is right twice a day. <laughs> a broken watch is a well debased. <laughs> uh, anyway. Anyway, let's get back on track here. So, um,. <laughs> Uh, so the Tutankhamun's dad, we all know, we all know King Tut. Oh yeah. Goes by Tutankhamun. His dad, and I, I'm not going to get this right at all. He goes by Tut. Of oh, the dad's name. Akhenaten. I think is how you Akhenaten. say it. Akhenaten. Akhenaten. It was, he ruled from 1350 <laughs> BC to 1334. And, A uh, good year. He, this guy abolished the pantheon of gods. Um, Boo. In Egypt. <laughs> Which, yeah, boo. Which we didn't really touch on. There was a lot of gods. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of gods. Very important. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of gods going on. But I was going to get into Let's it. Let's all say lots of gods. Soon, <laughs> when we started talking about King Tut's tomb. We might touch That's on the true. gods. Some would say the gods touched so, us. We'll gloss over his rant. People didn't really like the dude. I don't dude. care about <laughs> him. The, the, you know, the pantheon of he gods. He got rid of the gods. The pantheon of gods were really popular in Egypt. <laughs> it is like, not not a good thing. And he um, must have been terrible. By the way, no god. Politics because religion soothes people and you don't want to. Yeah. Like, Maybe he was very You just messed up your home, your base. Yeah, why did he do that? Probably because he had an ego on him. And like, come on, who's going to oh, change? Oh, God. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, you know. Was he trying pantheon. to establish himself as God, as the only one God? I don't think he was establishing himself as a, the he, only one God. And actually, Tutankhamun's actually, Tutankhamun's original name was slightly different because it was a reference to um, the new God in his name. So um, he made new gods. So Tutankhamun actually changed his name Quick. after he changed, brought back the uh, uh, traditional pantheon of uh, Egyptian gods, and. Uh, to to match that because there's there uh, I guess a particular god uh, is like the one god that his dad established was like 
like a, a sort of it was similar to one of the Egyptian gods. He was like all of them just combined. in the name. Just the name was similar. Hmm. Um, so like that's why his name was just slightly different. Anyway, um, so his dad dies. He comes to power, and he's actually not very old. Um, and he like, doesn't lo- he doesn't last very long either. He's 1334 BC to uh, 1325. It's only nine years that he was in power. How old was he? Like teenager he was when he took over? When he, he was 19 yeah. when he died. Oh, died. Yeah, right. Oh shit. <laughs> King Jason's Tut. like I don't know when he died. All right, I thought Jason knew when he died. Well, King look up the Tut. Tut. I think he's 19 when he died. Let's see if we're right. I mean, do, do will we even really know? I just would. I assume just be taking a guess. King Tut died when he was 19. I don't think that's how the way the song goes. King Tut died when he was 19. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looked like 18. 18 or 19. Yep. Look at that, Wikipedia. That's what Wikipedia says, so I am and right. And that's the fact. So on he everything. came to power when he was 10? <laughs> yeah. He had 9 or 10 years old, he comes to power. Um, so he probably didn't do a lot. In that time, well, yeah, he probably only ruled himself for like two or three years. Probably everything else was probably advisors. Yeah, a lot of people, and that was a lot. And of that's the why no one probably liked him because he didn't really do anything. When that was the case with a lot, well, the thing he did do though was actually really popular. You know, brought back. But the was tradition. it actually his his doing? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But he certainly owned it. He changed his own name. I mean, like he was certainly d- he went he along was behind it. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely down with it. Like he it was, was his way of getting back at dad. Well, yeah, he had daddy issues or something. Maybe his dad just was a jerk. And it sounds like his dad was a jerk because who abolishes like all those cool? Who abolishes God? <laughs> like, who does that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah. Right. Um, Osiris, King Isis, Tut. Horus. Such fun stories. By the so, power of Ra. So, uh, I think that he, he uh, after his death, there was maybe I think some intermediate uh, rulers that you know weren't exceptional. Like only for a couple of years. Like I think maybe some placeholders till they found somebody to actually well, take over. I was over. really good at cards, but uh, Horemheb took over in 1321 BC, and he lasted uh, till his reign lasted till 1293 BC, and he instituted this guy instituted the stability for the next century. Uh, his successor was Ramses the first. Yay! <laughs> Go Ramses! Go Ramses! <laughs> 1293 BC to 1291. And so this guy actually, Ramses the first to actually do a lot. He was there for two years. Um, Ramses. His son Seti uh, the first, 1291 to 1278 BC. Um, he was the first to battle the Hittites. And then his son, Ramses II. Now, this is Ramses. The, Ramses II and third. These are the ballers. Yeah. Ramses II. Um, the sequel. <laughs> this is yeah. always better. Uh, <laughs> so 1279 to 1212 BC. So Ramses II was there for a while. This Especially guy was, back in the day. He kicked ass. People died like when you were like 40. Baller. And he <laughs> fought, the, fought the Hittites. Uh, and, he, he, and this is the guy. He was in charge when there was the greatest battle of the Bronze Age occurred between the Hittites and the Egyptians uh, at Kadesh. Um, both Ooh. sides claimed victory and then they formed an alliance and then joined a trade embargo hey, against Assyria. <laughs> we won. No, we won. You want to team up? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you see like those drunken, Assyrians? They're looking scary. Yeah. Let's team up. That's basically what they it's did. It's like a drunken bar fight that happens and you realize <laughs> you're best friends. Yeah. yeah, the next day you wake up on the sidewalk and you're like, you know what? Just you have to have a trade a beer after the fight. Just like, yeah, that was a good fight, man. Yeah, basically is what this was like. And so, yeah. We should they, trade wives. <laughs> but Assyria, because of the power the Assyrians were gaining. Yeah, how do you like Canaan, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, around this time, it's probably Shalmaneser to Kalti Ninurta. Um, you know. Uh, That's a fun one. Yeah. Remember him? He's yeah. a jerk. Uh, <laughs> oh, they're probably Sack hanging out in Assyria. So, like, Sack Babylon. <laughs> it's understandable why, you know, the other powers are probably considerably worried <laughs> about that. Because, like, he's, you know. Like they were taking terror, they were conquering all sorts of people. The Assyrians yeah, sacking Babylon, you know? some light conquering. But it wasn't until the later Assyrian period where they became like the real big power. But obviously, here we go into the Bronze Age collapse again. The sea people attack from the coasts, as Ra- would make sense. <laughs> uh, puts considerable pressure on the Hittites and the Egyptians. Ramses the third, eighteen or eleven eighty two BC to eleven fifty one BC, defeated the last of the Sea People. Um, Ramses three, and actually the sea inducted people. some of them into his army. 
And this is you fight nice well doing that. I like and you. Possibly his personal guard, I think. Uh, yeah, that's ballsy. <laughs> so just all of, you, you want to guard me? It didn't work for Philip of Macedon. <laughs> so all of the, <laughs> all of these empires, you know, like we talked about the Bronze Age collapse, they all contract at this point and uh, or or just flat out collapse. Uh, Egypt becomes bankrupt because yeah, I mean every everybody's we're struggling. trying to survive. Throw money at it. <laughs> yeah, we got no more camels. So the third intermediate period begins here. This is 1069 BC to 525 BC. Nice. And now, if you've learned, if anybody's paying attention to these intermediate periods, what do these mean? Uh, it's well, in between. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but too, like if you notice, like these are always spl- uh, can constitute like a, a struggle, power struggle of some sort. Something the, where the Egypt, Egypt sort of split, split up. up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not like yeah, where Egypt would. wouldn't be classified as Egypt. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a bunch of random bullshit. Yeah, dude, going we got on. pyramids. Enter the Libyans. <laughs> <laughs> coming this fall <laughs> so they jump in and take control over much of the delta region literally jump it, in <laughs> many different states pop up at this point you know like separate states uh, claiming to be the legitimate pharaoh you know like oh we're we're in charge but i the, am pharaoh eventually the libyan kingdom is established from 945 bc to 715 bc and so uh <laughs> the nubian kushite kingdom uh <laughs> the kushite this is where yeah like the Kushites uh, and the Nubians, uh, they were high all the time. Uh, okay, hold on one sec. I got to back this up. So, yeah, the Libyan kingdom is established. Um, and then the Nubian Kushite kingdom unifies all of Egypt. So yeah, they weren't actually. With their good and, see, and this is what the dates were screwing me up here because the 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 Libyan kingdom actually persisted to 715 BC, but not the entire because the Nubians Kushite Conquer kingdom part it, of it. it started shrinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they started coming. at Nubian Kushite kingdom is 747. So they started up in obviously Nubian, you know, where the Nubians were a northern part, Nubian. not northern. I say Upper Egypt, which is really southern Egypt. Yeah. Um, and so. They, uh, yeah, they started up there and uh, started moving south. And then eventually, uh, you know, north. like I said, <laughs> north. Thank you. And eventually uh, took over the entire region. Uh, but they made the mistake of invading Assyria. You fucked up. And the Assyrians invaded Egypt. Like invading <laughs> Russia in winter. And took the Delta region and installed rulers loyal to Assyria in 640, or 664 B.C. I swear I've like mispronounced almost all the dates. Today. David is fired. Don't worry, guys. So the Kushite kingdom persisted in Upper Egypt. Um, well, Lower Egypt is now under Assyrian control, like we talk, talked about in the Assyrian episode. Um, this is the height of the Assyrian Empire. Go they, back and listen. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so they but Kushite kingdom persisted in Upper Egypt uh, from 785 uh, to. Th- uh, 350 uh, AD, actually. 785 BC to 350 AD. So the so a thousand years. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, <laughs> a thousand year empire. Yeah. Up in uh, my mouth. A thousand year Reich. <laughs> Jeez. What? Well, we'll cover the Nazis eventually, but we're not talking about them today. Um, <laughs> Kushite. You heard about them. Kingdom, though, yeah, lasted obviously uh, for a thousand years. Here. Not as long as the Nazis. I'm pretty sure it's AD. I might have that, might have that wrong, but it looks like. I don't know why we're David's incorrect. I don't AD like if it was like A A C or B, A C E B D. Well, isn't that what it's technically supposed to be now? It's like B C E and C E A C E. No, or it's just C E. Just C E. Common C-E? era. C E. All right. So after Assyria after. fell, the Egyptians became independent for a period during the Native Twenty Six Dynasty, which is six sixty four B C to five twenty five B C. And then after this, the Persians conquered Egypt in 525. <laughs> Damn Persians. And, and then, we're celebrating our 26th anniversary. <laughs> and then after the Persians conquered them, we know who comes along next. Alexander. Ooh. And he, then he conquered Egypt. <laughs> yes, we've talked about this. And then made a library. Go some conquering. And then the Ptolemaic kingdom is established from 305 BC to 30 BC. Ptolemy. Yes, after Alexander his general kicked it, Ptolemy. One of his generals, Ptolemy, well, like three or four generals split up his kingdom and Ptolemy got Egypt. 
And so, yeah, Ptolem- and two Ptolemy and was what happened. like he was fully invested. And then he, he like every Egyptian else. culture, like he, he, he didn't, he went all in. Yeah, exactly. Like this guy wasn't like, oh, he did. We're going to turn Egyptians into Greeks. Like, no, he's like, he was all about Egyptian culture. Dude, he's like, these They've been around cool. for thousands of years. Let's just, it's been working. You know, say what you will about the Greeks. They had a lot of respect. They were very complex and interesting people, like for, in historical context. A lot of the times. Killing each other. And I mean, obviously everybody's conquering each other and stuff here, but you look at the way, like, a lot of a lot of uh, you know people in power could have just as easily just you know thrown the culture away and trashed everything like we've seen. And one thing that we talk about here uh, with Tutankhamun, the reason King Tut's so popular is because his tomb was nearly untouched when it was discovered. All of the items, all of the things he was buried with, all of the treasures, all of all of the artifacts were, were preserved really well. None of the other pyramids have that. None of the other burial sites have that. They've all been raided. They've all been, all those valuables taken, all the artifacts gone. So what history tells us is that King Tut sucks so much, no one even wanted to raid his tomb. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, different theories on that. Like Some of it is the fact that he wasn't very well known. Uh, He died very young. And it seemed like he died rather quickly, too. And it's not really known how he died. It could have, like, some people think it maybe broken leg. Uh, some people think disease. Poison. Uh, Aliens. You know, maybe he just, like, fell off a pyramid. <laughs> 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 yeah, whatever. Son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, it's, really, it's really up in the air. But Was he buried in a pyramid, or did he just no, have, no, like, no. a tomb? Yeah, no, yeah he yeah. had a tomb. And But this is the thing I was going to bring up next, was his tomb... Actually, a lot of, looking at like a lot of architecture and just the way pharaohs were buried back in the day, uh, Tutankhamun's tomb is uh, is kind of like, unique because it's it was seemed like it was a tomb built for like a noble, but not somebody of like a pharaoh status, like somebody who is a, like a king. Just, they get pyramids. They, they got well, they got <laughs> large was, tombs or yeah. pyramids or large tombs, you know, and plain. like yeah, it was very it was plain. very lower level like and so that's another reason why people think it wasn't rated was people just would just consider it to be like oh well they, beneath them well yeah would they wouldn't the that treasure there they wouldn't have me. that much treasure anyway so it's not worth the effort to even go try and raid that uh and so yeah so people think that and too because like he died so young that it was it was kind of a rush job which is like sl- and that's why they didn't have a tomb ready like do you think of some of these rulers they had 20 years to construct their tombs you know and he he but, spent half their life but building it, a yeah, <laughs> but it's also kind of a, also a slap in the face uh, because in Egyptian culture, you're, the reason why they buried you with all your stuff was to help you in your journey to, to the, the afterlife, afterlife yeah, where, you met, all your where you met Osiris and uh, got your heart weighed against the heavenly feather by Anubis, <laughs> which decided whether you would meet Osiris and you know actually go to the afterlife. Mm. All right, we're banning the gods now. <laughs> Abolished. <laughs> There's one true god here. In the story. <laughs> um, His name is. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, Jehovah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say um, yeah, Chuck. Chuck. You know, he punches people. <laughs> you know which Chuck I'm talking uh, about. <laughs> yeah, of oh, the Norris variety <laughs> of the Norris dynasty. <laughs> the second Norris. The Nora Lamine. Oh, what? Charles. The, ne- the of Neo Norris. <laughs> the Neo Norris dynasty. <laughs> oh. The first. Yeah. So, uh, t- King Tut's certainly an interesting character. He, uh, and yeah, that's so. Oh, another thing though is the reason why he. Yeah, he actually wasn't that consequential in the long, grand scheme of things, but. It, what makes him so significant is literally just the discovery of all of the artifacts. And it gave us such an understanding of the culture and why they buried people with all this stuff. He like, literally saved Egyptian culture twice because he brought back the gods and then no one liked him enough to raid his tomb. So we got it. And then didn't that like start the craze? Didn't we talk about the craze of Egyptomania? Yeah. And like once, cause like this was pretty significant stuff. And like, you know, look back in these old movies and stuff, you know, Did Cleopatra, we, like they may, they people, we imported an obelisk. Yeah. <laughs> and they've been sitting there for like 2000 years too, which is pretty insane. I think we're going to give it back because our climate is ruining it. Well, I mean, it is kind of crazy to think about all the stuff that like got just buried. Yeah, over the sand. Time. Like, yeah, just no one just kept. Do you feel like someone would take a, <laughs> someone would just sweep it away or something? Well, yeah, just didn't care. Or like, they, well, first of all, Egypt got conquered. That's why the discoveries like the Rosetta Stone and everything are so remarkable. Is because there's like those things could have just yeah. I mean, there's stuff that we don't know about still buried. Yeah, and, the, and you think you kind of as a story a history lover, you kind of cry about inside about the uh 
just you know, like we only know it. We only have a fraction of the of the knowledge that was produced. Well, speaking so of Alexandria, much stuff was, when that library, the was Library burned. of Alexandria, <laughs> prime example. So right much there. crap that we'll never know. I mean, there yeah. have been wars. So and much stuff. knowledge centralized yeah. in one place, you know. And like this is that's why Greeks, you know, despite their flaws, were they br- wrote down things. They were br- <laughs> well, yeah, they were brilliant. They understood this, like they understood this concept very well of why you why you centralize knowledge and is you pass it down. You can centralize power all you want, and you, as we'll talk about throughout this this show, like that's what rulers often do, and that's what history is often about is just rulers trying to centralize power, trying to take over the world. It's like basically history is just a series of stories of rulers coming to power and their attempts to basically take over the world a and how they war. fail. Everybody the guy, the, the guy that came, the guy who came the closest was Genghis Khan. He had the largest empire. Then he got uh, like sick. land wise, yeah. ten times the size of Alexander's. Yep, I mean land wise, it was the largest empire. If anybody ever came close to ruling the entire world, it was him. But no, it's the world is a big place. It and is. No one person can do it, and it's what, and that's the lesson in history is. You know, and and that's why it all kind of culminates in World War Two. Is like that's where we see that end, that sort of thinking of taking over the world. Like it just after that, after we develop nuclear weapons, that was just like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. <laughs> like this ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah, it's just well. like invading and trying to conquer things. It's just not going to work anymore. We so. got we got a lot of it out of our system though, because for most of time it was just swords and horses and. Stuff like that. Swords and then all and of a sudden horses. we start figuring out how to accidentally blow stuff up. And then we found out a way to aim the blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> aim the blow up. <laughs> yeah. Another good brand. And then we uh, and then we started getting real good at that. And uh, yeah, then we got too good. <laughs> we got real good at that. And real good. So to the how, point, though, where nobody wants to actually hurt anybody anymore. So that's kind of wow. right. So how long did the Ptolemies run Egypt? Uh, I think it was 305 to 30 B.C. It's around 300 years. Pretty yeah. decent amount. Basically as long as America, if you want and to Cleopatra put it in context. Cleopatra was the last of the Macedonian dynasty. She was sexy. She killed herself. No, she didn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> I need to... <laughs> the Romans. Unreliable history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me say something. No. Romans. <laughs> well, it's funny, though. We say it, we joke about that, but history is often unreliable. Well, yeah, like literally, like as David always, was written, just saying, it's always about accounts. It's always about what people. The people are that wrote it down, as they say, history is written by the victors. You know, like, yeah, it's, it's a because true they burned all the other people's stuff. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> the losers get their books burned. <laughs> yeah, like they and, literally destroy you. And the victors were Rome. And think a lot. Yeah. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the victors were Rome. Uh, but think I, about too how many, how much knowledge, and how many, how many small smaller groups of people and smaller civilizations that were just run over and just yeah. consumed. And like, we don't even, we know, don't even about know about it. Yeah. We don't even know about that. We don't even know, man. We don't, we don't even know. The aliens. You do. don't even want to know. See, and that's why we got to get a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're trying to do here but at the end of the day, folks. <laughs> if Rome hadn't conquered Sponsor us. <laughs> Egypt, the empire never would have happened. The Roman Empire? Yeah. Because they wouldn't have been able to feed everyone. Because uh, Egypt was the, the, the agricultural, the, the agricultural hub, yeah. hub yeah. which is funny, to and think also of now. like it connected to Lower Africa and into India and yeah, 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 the Arabian Peninsula. So trade, yep. Like Rome made bank off of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very resource rich area. I mean, look at like Rome the was nu- a pimp. N- Nubians. And like Egypt and, was its and finest. Nubia, Kerma, Nubian. like all of the all of the valuables and riches and resources up there. I mean, it's just like it. Yeah, I mean, very wealthy region. And I mean, that's, I think it's one reason why it's covered so heavily and it lasts for 3000 fucking And the years. pyramids look cool. They're cool to look at and take pictures in front of. And there's a sphinx. It's like a cat with I no mean, nose. Napoleon went there. That thing's cool too. Napoleon shot its face off. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's the, not. That's Napoleon not killed. That's a no. Myth. It's not urban myth. Urban myth. No, no it's actually to the historical of Egypt, myth. A guy urban was myth is hammering like, and it just fell off. Urban myths are like. There's somebody in the house. With a hook. <laughs> the calls coming from in the house. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that would. Be, I think we call it a historical myth. I suppose right. like a, they're still myths. It's a fib. It's a myth. Uh, uh, Sasquatch. <laughs> the Egyptian Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Sphinx. He had a human face, but a lion body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's crazy that they haven't even. Speaking of like all the pyramids getting like raided and stuff, they haven't even found everything in the pyramids because a lot of because the, they have all these crazy mazes like inside of them and traps that are still there to this yeah. day so that always makes me wonder about the people that actually did like rob the pyramids it's like some indiana jones shit going on probably like a bear like a big rocks falling down well, yeah and too like tutankhamun because this rule his reign was so short like 
he only had so many valuables yeah. with them. Think about like some of the the major guys what they would have had with them, but we'll just never know. Twenty years of collecting shit. Yeah, like yeah, the riches those Orders. guys would have had, man. And like, I mean, no wonder they were rated, but like, still, it's just truly incredible. But anyway, we're we're about wrapped up on uh, the topic this week. But uh, yeah, it's ancient been Egypt's cool. I'm sure you heard of it. You heard of it now. Yeah, you just did. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you didn't skip to the very end. Like, I really like to Just heard that bit from Michael. Then you'd be totally confused. Like, oh my God, they talked about Egypt? But yeah. So uh, Thanks for next listening, week, guys. Uh, we might go into uh, a, a little more. I don't know what we're going to do now. <laughs> we don't know but... because we seem to jump back and forth. We just talk yeah. about things that are fun. Yeah, maybe we'll do a more uh, modern thing next week. We'll see. Nazis. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> maybe. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. They're coming, though. <laughs> the, the occultists are coming. The Nazis are coming. Oh, God. All right, folks. See you next week. Blitz Have break. a good one.